Hello, aloha and welcome to today's snack and sketch session. My name is Keiko. I'm a mixed media artist based in Hawaii and I got happy mail all the way from Switzerland. What a delightful surprise. My friend Sabrina and her daughter sent me all these beautifully packaged goodies from Switzerland, including chocolate and look at these beautiful paintings. This one, I will talk about this one in a minute. And there's chocolate too. And tea. So there's more chocolate. <laughs> It was kind of hard to to unwrap all these beautiful gifts. I mean, I just almost felt bad about ripping up that paper. Look, it's so pretty. And they also sent me some fun colored pencils. I think I have to eat one of those kagi right away. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mm-hmm. While I'm at it, I'm gonna try the other one. Mm. So this is also chocolate, but it um, contains malt. Wow, this didn't even melt. This is still one whole piece. Mmm, mm-hmm, crunchy. Mmm, so good. Mmm. Look at these cool neon colors. Oh, and I love that these pencils are so fat like you have a really good grip on those and then here we have from the same brand Carondage the Swiss brand we have these metallic colored pencils and they're water soluble so that's pretty cool too because I get wow look at that man they have such a nice finish just look at this beautiful sheen it's so lovely for today's session i thought i'd show you how i create my packaging envelopes for aloha watercolors so i take some relatively thin but still sturdy mixed media paper and i paint on it with watercolors and i usually add on some details with color pencil. So I think to test out these new ones, this would be perfect. For supplies, I'm using this Canson mixed media paper today. This is a 98 pound, kind of lightweight, but also pretty sturdy mixed media paper that holds up surprisingly well with watercolors and it's still thin enough so I can easily make my sleeves with this one. I will link all the materials down below in the caption. I will of course also use the new colored pencils I just received in my surprise happy mail and I will also use my handmade Aloha watercolors. These four colors, Opera Pink, Jade Vine, Kohola, which is a synthetic indigo, and Ko'oko'olau, which is a very bright yellow. Again, I'll be linking everything down below. As a brush, I'm using a size 8 mop brush. This one is by a German company, Busna, and unfortunately it's not available in the US. I will still put a link below for the German store. However, for this kind of technique, you can pretty much use any type of brush that holds a lot of water. So for that reason, I do really like these mop brushes as they are able to hold a lot of water. But even if you use just a regular round brush, bigger size, maybe a size 8, 10 or 12, this technique will work really well. I prepared two jars of water. In jar number one, I'll rinse the brush first. And then in jar number two, I'll rinse it one more time to get it really clean. I'm dipping my brush in water and I'll start with my Opera Pink. For this session, I'm using the paint right out of the tube. No pre-mixing or anything. But of course, you can always feel free 
to get out a ceramic mixing palette and pre-mixing your colors. But this is just such a fun, easy, quick project. And I really like for the colors to be super vibrant. I'm going to do some blending here. It's beautiful, the kind of bright orange you get when you mix these two colors. The opera pink and this bright yellow. I'm making sure that I clean my brush in between so that I get the straight yellow and not contaminating the pan with the opera pink. So as you can see, I'm working really swiftly. I'm holding my brush perpendicular to the paper and just going in and out of my loose florals here. I'm going to also add just some random shapes. Maybe these are little buds or just some color pops. So what I usually do is I'd have several pieces of paper ready and then I'll go just jump from paper to paper uh, doing the same color on four, five, six different sheets of paper. Getting some of my Fidelo turquoise for the leaves. Just going all around, picking up some more paint. Picking up some water. I really don't mind when the paints mix. Even if it's the pink and the purple, it actually makes for a really beautiful... Oh, excuse me. I mean, the, the teal and the pink mix into this beautiful purple. Just a few dabs here and there. And I'm consciously creating this kind of pattern because I know that later on I will cut the paper in half and then fold each side in half. So I'll have one flower in front, one in the back. And then as a last step for the watercolor part, I'm dropping in some indigo into the leaf parts while the first layer is still wet. I'm not doing much with it, I'm just letting it blend as it wants to. For the next step, going in with the colored pencils, it's really important to remember one thing. If you have regular colored pencils, I mean regular as in non-water soluble, you really have to wait till everything is dry. Otherwise, if you go in while the paint is still wet and the paper is still wet, you will end up ripping the paper, pretty sure. However, if you have water-soluble color pencils, like these ones, it's possible to go over everything while the paper and the paint are still wet. It's just, first of all, these are much softer than regular colored pencils. And because they're water soluble, they will just naturally blend. Because that's how you would use them anyways. You would normally use them with, with water. I would still be careful, so I wouldn't press down too hard, especially in those areas where you can still see the water puddling. But you can pretty much go in, especially in the areas that are almost dry, and just scribble on top of the watercolor. Apologies for the noise, you guys. I 
think my neighbor, one of our neighbors just got out the leaf blower. I hope it's not too bad and you can still hear me fine. Hmm. Well, maybe I should take a break and <laughs> have a piece of chocolate and wait until they're done. Good. Sounds like my neighbors are done with their leaf blowing and now my paper is dry so excellent opportunity to test out the neon colored pencils. As I mentioned before these are not water soluble so they're regular colored pencils and it's a good idea to wait until the paper is completely dry before you apply them. Ooh, I really like this effect. Adding them on top of that teal, teal and indigo watercolor. Oh, that looks really cool. And it's a very different effect when you compare it to what I did previously with the metallic pencils. So where you have this slight sheen of the metallic pencil, very subtle, drawing on top of the watercolor with the neon, really turns it into a different color, into another color. That is really cool. Ooh, and that is very nice bright fluorescent pink. I also really love how easy it is to draw with these. I'm, I'm really hardly pressing down. This is very cool. Feels really good. Let's try out the orange one. Wow. Super bright. Just like the pink one. Very, very easy, smooth application. And again, just in just like the previous example where I drew with green over the teal and indigo, you can completely change the watercolor. It's okay, Leo, calm down. <laughs> uh, the puppy was asleep, and then you know, here's. Here's a noise, wakes up, it has to bark a little. <laughs> and I really like the effect of that fluorescent green on top of the watercolor, so I'll do that a little more. Just by itself, I'd say the green is probably the weakest of the four neon colors. So when you look at the orange here, it's very bright, clearly and very well visible on the white paper. The yellow looks great on white, but Look how it's not showing up in a darker color. And the pink, I think so far it's my favorite. It works great both on top of the watercolor and by itself, super bright. So all in all, I'm a really big fan of these new neon colors. 
neon colored pencils. It's just so wonderful. I, it, that was a total surprise. This happy mail. And I'm having so much fun. This is, this is really great. I'm hopping over to the first page or the left side of the page I should say and also just adding a few little touches of neon over here so that I have a combination of both the neon and the metallic. I like how this is looking so in the next step I'm going to cut the paper and create my paper sleeves. To make the paper sleeves I pulled out my cutting board, a straight edge and what I usually do to make things easy is to just fold it in half. So usually for me for for the orders that I receive, this is the perfect size, making two sleeves out of one sheet of paper. But of course, I could make different sizes from this paper as well. Like I could do thirds, for example, and have skinnier sleeves. And then before I fold them, I have my logo stamp. And again, I will link everything down below in the caption. And just choose a good spot for the logo. Now I have to be a bit careful because this is still wet. So I don't want to touch it while I'm folding. And then I have this really cool paper punch and folder. This is from Japan. It's possible to get it in the US as well. So what this thing does is that it staples the paper without using staples. It really just folds, staples, punches, <laughs> folds and staples the paper itself. This is so neat. I used to just use the regular staples. But I honestly find that having this option to use just the paper itself is absolutely delightful. And even though it's not as strong of a bond as if you use metallic staples, of course, I think, you know, like, it's absolutely fine for my purposes and I like that I don't have to use metal staples. And oh I forgot yeah this is a really handy little tool as well. A paper edge puncher to to round the edges of the paper. And I like that this specific one has different sizes, so you can adjust the size to the kind of paper and the size that you're using. So I usually go for the biggest one for my sleeves here, but if I have just a tiny little card, for example, I could just use the smaller one. And here we go. So these are the sleeves that I use to put in 
the watercolors. So I just put them in here and then close them up with a clip and they're good to go. If you enjoy watching videos about art supply hauls, art supply reviews, you might also enjoy watching this video I made about art supplies I got from Japan. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this video and aloha and I'll see you next time. Bye! This one here is uh, <laughs> an Appenzeller Berli Bieber. So this is a soft cookie. this out so I can show you. It's sticky but as I mentioned before it did travel around the world. So see it's really soft and it has this filling. Now if you're familiar with marzipan you might know how this will taste like because it's kind of similar to marzipan but I think they make it from apricot. Let's see yeah it's apricot the, the pits of apricots and then they're roasted. There's also honey and almonds and then flour for the outside of the cookie. Mmm, that's so good. Mm. I really love marzipan. I used to not like it as a kid, but at some point it totally turned and now I am such a big fan. Oh, this is so yummy.